Cube. I'm Helen, the Diddy Stitcher. Welcome. We're doing something a bit different today. I'm gonna talk you through my Pip and Chip bobbin um, system and some of the other organizing systems that I use in my cross stitch. Um, I had a request on a previous video to do this, so um, Marike, I hope I'm saying that right. This one's for you. Um, so I'm taking a little break from work right now. I've got my cup of tea. Ooh. Lovely. So I'm just going to take you through and show you my my setup. So sorry if the the filming's a little wobbly. I haven't got it on a tripod or anything because I need to need to move around but hopefully you get the gist. So this is my Bisley cabinet. We're in my spare room slash office. Um, since working from home everything's a mess. Um, me and my husband have taken over the spare room. Um, he's in the office today. So yeah this organization system so we've got the Bisley Bisley drawers and a billy bookcase no it's not a billy bookcase it is a billy bookcase is it i think it's a billy bookcase with a door just on the bottom because this used to stay in our living room and we had to have a lock on a baby lock on the door for the baby she wouldn't get in and touch my stitching so I'm quite glad that it's all here now because it's it's contained um in one area of the house. So since having kids, you just have to put yourself in a corner while they take over your lives. So this is what it looks like now. It's changed a lot over the years that I have been stitching. It's evolved, it's definitely grown in my stash size, therefore my organisation has had to change with it, but I, I just like to keep things really organised. So, when I got the Pip and Chip bobbins, I got them for my birthday, so that was about five months ago that I've had them, and it's it just makes me happy. So yeah, the Pip and Chip bobbins fit in this Bisley cabinet, filing cabinet, they're A4 size drawers um, and they come with their own like foam insert. I'll try and show you this. I think I'll try and show you this one at the bottom. So it's a foam insert that Pip and Chip provide. This is not Bisley, but it fits really nicely inside um, and they have pre-cut slots for the bobbins to sit in so it's a really um I want to say thick thick and sturdy foam um so it's it's soft it's not going to scratch but it's not it's not going to deform either if that makes any sense whatsoever so coming back to the top so I organize my bobbins by number first of all I'm not a designer I have made my own designs before but I will just pick out colors that I like but mostly I work from charts so I need to know where the exact number is and um, so I keep mine in numerical order I always start at the back the top left hand corner and work my way down to the front and then back up to the next row and back down. Some people start at the front and go backwards and come back. It just what makes sense to you. Um, so I've always done this way in my bobbin boxes. So I've kept it the same, the same way for my pip and chip bobbins. So these are all the solid colours, and the main pack that pip and chip do come with some of the variegated threads and I keep them separate 
because I don't tend to use them in like say my full coverage pieces. Um, most of my standard charts, if I want to change things up, I'll maybe swap one out for a variegated, but then all my variegated are together. So that's your, um, the variegated from the main pack, you're like one to 40, I think, no, 40 to something, we'll get to it. But then also the colorists and the variegated, um, like 4,000s number, I keep them all together. So these ones are just my full solid colours, sorry, solid colours. Um, and I think I have a complete master set. All of these should have a full um, full thread to them. These extra bobbins that I have, these are from um, when I re-kitted all of my um, projects. So... I had some left over in the this old style um, label that I made myself. So when I come to get to refill from my master set, I can use this one up first and then go on to ooh, this one. So I've not got a lot of those, so I'm quite happy to leave them in here. If I had more duplicate bobbins, which I did in the past before I rebobinated. Um, I kept them in a bobbin box separately and I would kind of go to that as my first port of call to fill up and then come, come here. So that's the first drop. So you can see that goes one, two, four, 20. And then we start again here at the back 42 and so on and so forth. So again, I've got some duplicates here, not too many. Um, this one, again, start at the back, go forward, go to the back, go forward, so on and so forth. I've even got some paper bobbins here that are really old school. 935 was a big colour in my um, Midsummer's Eve full coverage and I had a lot of 935 left over so I've been trying to get through it. Um, so that's one that's hanging around like a bad smell is 935. And then we're coming to the 3000s. And then to the end of the solid colors, we get to B5200 with the um, main pack of Pip and Chip, you get duplicates of B5200, a crew, white or blank, and 310. So 310 is sat in this draw in numerical order. And then there's extra one I have here just in case. I haven't been using the extra ones because I don't, I only use this as a master set. I don't use these in projects, but I have them there just because I don't want to get rid of them. So this is a um, a pip and chip bobbin up close. Please ignore my nails. I need a manicure, um, but I wanted to get this done. Um, so this is a pip and chip bobbin. You see they're quite thick and they're quite wide compared to standard bobbins. Let me see if I can get compared to this so this is a DMC branded bobbin with my new stickers that I've got on so if I put this on the floor here let's see you can see they're they're a little bit taller I think they're a little bit wider yeah a little bit wider and definitely thicker you can see that so all of the pip and chip bobbins, um, ooh, I'll try and put that back. Come with um, like a backing plastic. I guess it's the the acrylic 
that they use has the backing plastic on they take maybe the front one off to um to put this label on and then they leave the backing on um just so it doesn't scratch or anything so i took them all off as i put them in um yeah so these are the variegated ones you get with um, the main set, so 48 to 125. So you can see the printed one there is variegated to show you the variegations in that colour. I don't have these um, at the minute. I have some of these colorous ones and the variegation ones. Um, just because the hobby craft that I went to had a sale and they were selling them for like 50p a skein. So I don't know that I'll ever use them, but it's just nice to have. So that that's a, that'll be a full skein um, of DMC, eight meters or how many yards is that? I'm not sure. Um, the stand the standard skein length, and I wrap them. I try and keep it quite neat so they all it lays nicely. Um, but you can see it holds it quite well. And the tail in the slit there is held quite tight. I like them. They're not too tight. They're not too loose. They're just right. And because of the thickness, it's like it's really satisfying <laughs> to put it, um, to set them in there. It like kind of clicks. It doesn't click the thread. Like it doesn't, it doesn't harm the thread whatsoever. But it's, you can feel it when you put it in. Um, which you don't always get with the DMC ones. So let's try and put this back. There you go. Let me have some tea. And don't they just look pretty? Isn't it nice just to have pretty things in cross stitch? So yeah, so these are the... So up to here would be your standard... Pip and chip, I think it's 504 bobbins you get. So some people just buy a five drawer Bisley and you can put all your standard colours in there. Um, I went for a 10 drawer Bisley just because it wasn't too much more expensive than a five drawer and I knew I would just need extra space. Um, I didn't realise that I would need them for pip and chip, but I will explain that later because I have a little mathematical um cheat sheet for you so yeah we come into the colorists and the variegations again keeping them in numerical order more colorists so yeah i don't have all of them but i'm not too worried about that it's nice to have the bobbin when i do have it and then we come into the light effects ones. So these are the, your E numbers. So the metallic threads. Um, I think there's some very derogatory names for this. And I, I would attest to them because it is a nightmare to deal with. But it's so pretty. And I, I do love the um, the stickers or the, the transfer that Pip and Chip put on. It is really accurate to what the thread is. Um, Especially with these these variegations, I just think it's absolutely lovely. I'll try and put it in there. So yeah, I got the uh, the light effects set. So I think that was a set of forty up to E fifty two hundred. And then you can see I have um, space for for more pip and chip bobbins as I'm going to get them. These are my satin colours. I don't. I only have these three of the DMC satins. Um, so I didn't feel the need to buy the satin set from Pip and Chip. Um, but when I do, I'll know know how many I'll get and to put them in. So I wanted to show you um, the difference of how a Pip and Chip bobbin fits in um, these, these inserts that Pip and Chip do. That's my Nymo thread. I just keep it in there so I know where it is. Um, and how a, a standard DMC or any other kind of plastic, or the cardboard ones, I suppose, they're all equally the same size, sit in. So if I try and put this one in a slot, 
you can see it kind of stands up I think that's helped by having some thread on it but if I try and wiggle it back and forth you can see there's lots of room there and it does it's a bit floppy compared to these ones that don't have any thread on and they're stood up nice and straight and they don't um, move side to side because the um, the inserts are cut especially for pip and chip bobbins not for the DMC you could use them but that's just the difference um, you, you might get a bit flopping and a bit there we go so next I have my Mill Hill beads in my Bisley drawer so these are actually Cottage Mills connector box they're called and I get the small size so what these boxes are is they're just these little um, storage boxes they're really small you can see they clip shut but they're just the perfect size for some beads and you can see they connect side to side and back to front let me try and show you so back to front so it's really hard to do this one-handed so you can see that's back to back and they also sit nicely nested on top of each other and they stay that way if I get it right there you go so they, they like clip together on the top which this is one of the things that I've um, reorganized over the year I've always had these little boxes ever since I started using Mill Hill beads these are mostly from um, leftover stuff from the kits so from either my Christmas Village series that I'm doing um, or the little ornaments you get they give you tons of beads um, so waste not want not I'll keep them but I want to keep them and make sure that I know they're the right number so these boxes are so adaptable because you can configure them to the shape of your um you know whatever you put them in whether it be a drawer a box and whether you just want to keep them all stacked together um so in a bisley drawer for example i can put nine across and nine down and i can also stack them to like it's it can close quite nicely with two so I could fit so that what's that 81 162 of these boxes and I don't necessarily have to use them just for mill hills I could use them for other things if I start using them but at the minute they're just for mill hills so again I keep them in numerical order going from 00081 to oh, 65270 so I really recommend these boxes for anything small that you want to keep they do them in different sizes as well and it's the same principle they connect side to side back to front and stack on top of each other they're just really handy um, I think I got some on Amazon, I think some craft stores stock them, but just search for Cottage Mills Connector Box. I'll try and link something below so you can find it, maybe. So I just keep some spare ones there, and whenever I get some new Mill Hills, or I have some leftover from a kit, I can just make a label and stick it in. And if I show you this one so these are all connected next to each other um so they're easy to to transport but then easy to take off as well I could just take that one and go and if I needed to put one see I've got 42041 and 42043 if there is a 42042 
I can just put it in there and put it back. It's really simple, really adaptable. I can't recommend them enough. So these have traveled between boxes, between just sitting on a shelf to now in my Bisley and I'm able to configure them to whatever the, um, the space that they're taking up. Next in here, this is my spare bobbins. So these are my spare, these are the DMC ones that I'm now using with my new stickers. And these are, oh, these are the old style ones. So these are just the non-branded generic ones of which I have lots of different types. And these are still numbered. So if I ran out of those stickers, so I have four sets, I think, um, and I still needed an extra one, I've got one, I've got one here. Um, and I could take those labels off and relabel them if I needed to. Um, this is just a, this is one of these bobbin boxes that I use a lot and it's just um, the lid broke. So it just sits in there um, quite nicely. This is one of the large bobbin boxes. It doesn't fit in sideways, but it fits in, it fits in that way. And I could put some stuff down here if I wanted to. But that's that. The next drawer I have is where I keep my stickers. So these are um, from Serious Stitches, but her name's different on Etsy. I can't remember. What does it say on here? No, no, no. Oh, I've probably just shown you my address as well. Um, I will, I will link them below. But I've, I've talked about her before. These are the, um. The stickers that I use on my DMC branded bobbins and the, so they're curved at the edge which I really like to keep them all in the same space on, on the bobbin so they, they line up nicely and I'll show you how they look um, in a whip of mine in a little bit. So I've got yeah four, four complete sets of DMC and one set for all of the so like the light effects and the etoile I, I don't expect I will be needing multiples of those in in projects but I definitely have four of of one number that I'm using at any one time and I'll show you how I track that as well the other thing in here is these are the labels that come with the Bisley. So they're like perforated, ooh, focus, perforated to the right size. And then I use my label maker and stick in. So they're really, what's this one here? Oh, I got it stuck. There we go. So it's just a piece of card. You could use a pretty card. You could use some scrapbook paper or anything. But I just, I put it in and then I draw around the outside with a pencil because it it kind of goes further down. It's not completely central, that sticker. So I make it central to the window, not central to the, to the piece of card. But I could, I can reuse that. I can flip it over and make a new one. I can just use this as a template to cut out prettier um prettier pieces of paper make it look make it look nice um but you get tons of extras um of those which is always handy and then the other thing is this is my little maths cheat sheet for the bobbins so each insert holds 108 bobbins it has 108 slots the standard set from Pip and Chip has 504 bobbins. So you've got duplicates of the B5200, the blank or the white, a crew and 310. You got the 18 variegated colors from 48 to 125 and then 482 solid colors. Um 
So that's why you would need at least five drawers. I added the colorist and variations. That was 84 bobbins. Um, so that was another, another drawer that I needed. Uh, and the light effects is 40 bobbins. But you see the Etoile has 35 bobbins. And uh, Saturn has 60 bobbins. If you were wanting the discontinued bobbins, they're 25 bobbins. And then the blanks um, for whatever you want to use them for come in a set of 24, 60 or 84. So when you're thinking about buying pip, or chip bob pip and chip bobbins, um, you can add up what bobbins you, you will purchase or maybe purchase in the future. Add all these up, so 504 plus 84, I'm not going to do maths here because I can't do it, but then divide it by 108 and that's how many drawers that you will need at least. Um, so it's it's one of the things that, that I researched when I was, I didn't, well, my husband bought them for me for my birthday, but I told him exactly what I wanted is that a lot of people went out and just bought the five drawer Bisley um, because that holds the standard set with a little bit extra. But I knew I would want at least, at least these four at some point. I don't think I'll need the discontinued and I don't think I'll use blanks for anything. But you never know. Just always be prepared. So that's why I bought the 10 drawer Bisley. So... I'm currently using one, two, three, four, five, six drawers for the bobbins that I currently have and I've got room to expand. Like I can, I can move some stuff around here, but I keep that just in case anybody has any questions on the, on the um, cross stitch storage and solutions Facebook page that I'm on. Um, a lot of questions get asked like that, so I've got a little cheat sheet that I comment on people's posts and be like, this is what you might need. Um, and, and this draw is my um, finished projects. Um, they're just the the patterns. So <laughs> this is the, an Art of Disney um, cross-stitch kit that I did when I worked at Disney World in Florida um, some 11 years ago now. And that's before I realized you could make a working copy. So I highlighted the original. So I don't think anyone's going to want that. But I keep it there just because it's nice. These are my mill hill kits that I've used. Um, that I can just pass on the chart. Because um, you can get all the, all the materials that you need as and when. I think this one is the only one that's... I finished. I've used the chart... But I didn't need to use any of the the floss or the beads because I had left over from other charts. So now I get to pass that on as a full kit, um, which is great. These are the paper patterns of the Scarlet Quince um, charts that I'm working on now. But they are now digital. Um, Scarlet Quince has their own app, so I don't need to keep the paper pattern with uh, with my whip. And there are some other um, projects that I finished, and I won't. I probably won't stitch it again, but it's nice to keep them. So that is that. That is my Bisley. I wanted to. Ooh, sorry. I wanted to talk a bit of how I use my Pippin Chips day to day um, because as you might realize they're all here in a master set so I'm not using them in my projects. So what I do is, let me show you this, this is my tablet, oh, oh that's me on my wedding day, isn't that lovely? So uh, this is kind of my stitching tablet. Um, I have I use Google Sheets um to track a lot of my things. So this is my DMC list. So these are all my whips. Not all of my whips. The whips that require 
DMCs to kit up. So this doesn't include kits that already come with a floss um, or projects that don't use DMC at all. But this is uh, my Mo Imperial, for example. And this is a list of every single DMC that it needs. My White Star, Moon and Stars, my Chatelaine of the DMCs that that needs. Obviously that needs a lot of specialty threads. Um, Gatsby and the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. So I have a formula that goes onto this sheet. And this is all of the... Oh no. What have I done? Tick. Tick. Okay. Um that adds up all of those numbers and what of those numbers how many I need for all of my current whips. So you can see here 154 is used by one whip and it's this dark blue which I know is my moon and stars. Dark blue moon and stars. So, if I were working on my Moen Imperial, for example, so this is my cupboard with all my whip bags. There is one downstairs because I was working on, my, that was my Moon and Stars one that I was working on last night. Um, and I take them down one at a time because it's in the living room and the baby can get it. Um, so once I'm finished stitching on a project for a while, I will pack it up in its project bag and bring it back up here and choose another one to go and take downstairs. So this is my Moe Imperial. This is the all these project bags, most of them, are by Tracy at Oso Twinkle Crafts and I will not buy a project bag from anywhere else. This is this is a cushion cover <laughs> that has my starry skies in it. And these are two little jute bags that, because I need some more. Tracy, I need some more um, of the smaller project bags. So these big ones hold an 11 by 11 Q snap. And they hold a bobbin box. Bobbin box is labeled just in case I have a few boxes out at a time. I know which ones goes back where. <clears throat> I have a matching grime guard because I'm that extra. Um, I keep my projects on um, key snaps. I don't take them off each time. It doesn't bother me. I know it bothers some people. I'm sorry, but I just don't have time for that. But you can see it all fits in there really nicely. As I said, these patterns are digital now. So I just go on the app. I don't need a paper pattern. <clears throat> I do have a little bag downstairs and I do keep downstairs with like scissors and measuring tape and all sorts, you know, my little accoutrement bag. Um, that doesn't get swapped out. So I have everything that I need in this bag for this project if I were to just grab it and go. Um, so yeah. This is what I work from downstairs. So these are my DMC branded bobbins with the new stickers. These are all finished now. Um, so you can see some of them are like fuller skeins from when I, oh, I can't see to put it back in, um, from when I had everything kitted up before. And now I have some that are, let's have a look, like this one that's just got one length on it. Um, the way that I do my lengths, I cut all my lengths to 100 centimeters or a meter. I do that for a couple of reasons. One is because DMC skeins come as eight meter lengths. So I know I'll get equal um, lengths between them. I won't have a little bit at the end. It's just a bit naff. And especially with 
my two Moe ones is a Scarlet Quince and Scarlet Quince use a lot of blended threads. So I know when I take a, th a length out of here to go with another colour, they're going to be the same length. It's also a really nice length when I'm doing loop starts and um, to fold it in half if I'm using just the one colour. But by doing that, I keep all of the threads uniform in that if I'm using a, a blended thread. Um, and I don't waste a skein. And I always know how, how long to cut it. If I ask my husband to cut me a length, he knows to cut it to a metre or 100 centimetres. That might be a bit too long for some people. Some people might think, oh, you must get loads of... Um, knots and stuff sometimes I do um but I just I find the benefits outweigh the risks in that sense um so yeah so this is DMC 3838 this is a color that I need for for this chart now I kind of restocked this last night um but for example if I'd run out of thread for this, um, I need I need a, another length, another one hundred um, length of thread, and I need to know where I can get it from. I could come straight to my stash, my master set, <clears throat> but because I want to eventually get down to where I'm just using, I just have a thread, one length of thread per um, project. So I can kind of narrow these down a bit. You know, I don't need to be carrying around all of that at once and not for the, um, not for the amount of time it takes me to finish a project. So I go, 3838, 3838 are on my list here. And I've divided these by numbers. So all the, all the 700s are there, the 800s, the 900s, the 3000s, the 33s, 36, 37, 38. So 38, 38. I can see it's just one. The green one is this imperial. So none of my other projects are going to have 38, 38 in them. So then I can come to my master set, find where it is, 38, 20, so it must be in here, 38, 38, Ooh. there we go. And I would measure a metre length off of there, put this one back, and put it on here, put it back there. Like I said, I, I, I organize these numerically. So 223 is the, the smallest number that I use. And I come forwards and I go down each row like this. And sometimes when it falls over, it gets a bit messy, but that's okay. Um, it's just the way my brain works. Some people start at the front and they go backwards. Whatever. But I keep it the same here as I do with my master set. Um, if, for example, I was looking at this one, 3854, so I need some more length of that, please. Come to my list, 3854. So I can see two of my whips are using 3854. This green is my imperial, and this light blue, I know, is my um, white star, which is in this project bag. So, I can open this up and see if I could borrow a little bit from here. What are we looking for? 3854. And I see that's got a lot to spare. So, I would cut a, a meter length off of there and give it to my Imperial. This might be like complete sacrilege for some people because. It might not be the same die lot. You know, it's it's not going to match, might not match the threads that I had before. 
yeah, I agree. But I'm not bothered about it. Because Scarlet Quince um, is so is so confetti, so detailed, so um, they use the blended threads. It's not going to matter. If I was doing a piece and it was all one colour, I would definitely get its own skein of thread to make sure I ha- it wasn't, it wasn't going to be obvious where the line was, if that makes sense. I just wanted to, to say that just because I know some people have questions. Um, you know, you need to kit up a full project with the same dye lots. Yes, I agree, but in this case, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. As long as it's not vastly, vastly, vastly different, and I don't think it would ever be as vastly different that it would make a difference to me in the Scarlet Quince full coverage pieces, especially. So, the other thing that I wanted to show you was, where is it? So say one of these colours that I needed to replenish was 524. It has to be the one right at the back, doesn't it? There you go. So I've replenished this recently. But say that I'm I'm coming here now. So you can see what's left on this bobbin is a metre. I know that's a metre because I take off one metre every time. So I would be able to put it in here and know that it would be the right length to pair with another blended thread so I'm not wasting um not wasting thread um now because that's my master set I would put this on I would start my shopping list of um colours that I needed so once it was one length left I would want to be getting some more of that soon uh, because I know that I'm going to need it for well let's have a look 524 524 I'm going to need it for at least two whips that's not going to do me two whips so I definitely need some more of that so that will be on my shopping list uh, when I do my next Lakeside Needleworks order. Oh, the other thing that I want to say is some people might be wanting to use these pip and chip bobbins um, as their as their whip bobbins. I'm just going to show you why I don't do that because these are the um, bobbin boxes I use. These are the hemline ones, but they're very similar to the DMC boxes um, that you get you know you've got these little compartments and you've got this big compartment on the side so if I were to use a pip and chip bobbin I'm just going to put it in there for now you can see how much oh sorry you can see how much bigger they are and the lid doesn't close properly if if all of my bobbins were this size and I did I did do it when I first got my pip and chips the lid doesn't close properly because they're just that much chunkier, a little bit taller, a little bit thicker. Um, so you can see there's a lot of, um, I need a lot of colours for this one. I wouldn't be able to fit all of the colours that I needed in, in one bobbin box. And I can only fit one bobbin box in my project bag. That's why I do it this way. So, not to say that I don't love my pip and chip bobbins, because I do, but they are best, I think, in my opinion, sat there, looking lovely, ready for me to shop out of my stash. I think that's all I wanted to tell you about. This has gone on for 45 minutes now, goodness. I hope someone's still here listening. Um, But yeah, I've got more organisation stuff up there. If you're interested, 
please let me know. But it was that was mainly about Pip and Chip. Um, yeah, I can't recommend them enough. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. And I'll see you soon. Bye.